we said before, strange things do happen in the Highlands. In 1986, the highly successful steam excursions to Malig on the West Highland seemed threatened by the imminent abolition of traditional signalling in favour of radio control. <laughs> so BR set up a test to see if the new system could be used on a steam local. A black five was sent all the way from Fort William down to Glasgow, then up the Highland Line through Perth to Inverness. It was temporarily fitted with a transmitter receiver and booked to work a one-off excursion on the only route currently using radio control, the far north line beyond Dingwall. The locomotive was Ian Storey's number 44767, now named George Stevenson, and built by the LMS in 1947. crosses the bridge over the River Connon. Then runs alongside the Cromarty Firth near Everton. Invergorton station is the first on the radio-controlled section as can be seen from the abandoned Highland Railway posts shorn of their signal arms. Some of the old equipment survives in a derelict state, but there's no longer a signal box to operate it. The Victorian station canopy is now surmounted by a cluster of aerials, transmitting and receiving train driver signals from Dingwall to Tain, the next station up the line. So, after receiving an invisible right away, the Black Five sets off for Tain. Many of the stations on the line have lost more than just their signals. Invershin is now a ruin, although it survives as a halt. While Loth, Evanton, the Mound and many others have either been sold as private houses or disappeared altogether. Tain, though, remains a principal station on the far north line and happily is well cared for. British rail name boards may lack charm, but they do indicate some faith in the future. Tain in the old days had sufficient traffic to warrant its own local train service to Inverness. Two trains each way daily, in addition to the through service to Wick. But these ended when the steam shed closed in 1961. George Stevenson was the first steam local to leave Tain for 25 years, heading north towards the Dornoch Firth. Sutherland at Coleraine, the train climbs up the valley of the River Shin before shutting off for Lear. The line reaches a summit beyond Lear at the head of Strath Fleet, where a lone photographer braved a downpour to capture this unique steam working.
Belmont station was closed in June 1960 and is now a private house. Beyond Gulfs Bay is the Duke of Sutherland's private station at Dunrobin. And a traditional welcome provided. The significance of this stop lies in the fact that but for the encouragement of the third Duke, this railway would never have been built beyond the Dornoch Firth. From the turrets and spires of his seat at Dunrobin Castle, the Duke promoted the extension of the Far North Line, obtaining his own Act of Parliament in 1870. He was so impatient he actually started building the line before the Royal Assent was given, and for many years ran his own private train. The Sutherland Company was eventually taken over by the Highland, but the original name survives on many of the structures, with of course a special mention of the Duke. The steam special terminated in the rain at Helmsdale, 102 miles from Inverness. The Black Five, a new record, is the most widely travelled preserved steam engine in the country. There's no longer a turntable here, so, discomfort or not, the return trip had to be made tender first in the pouring rain, here passing the Bay of Port Gower. At Rogart, George Stevenson starts to tackle the long climb back to Laird Summit raises echoes not heard in Strathfleet for a quarter of a century. Beyond Laird, the hard work is over, and the local coasts back along the Firth. In the Garden Station again, with its handsome Highland Railway ironwork. On returning to Inverness, the radio aerials were removed, and the local was sent overnight to Abbey Moor for servicing. This is the headquarters of the Straths Bay Railway, who still use the original Highland steam shed. And they also run five miles of the old forest line as far as Boat of Garton. Black Five we saw running to Kyle is also based here. George Stevenson was prepared here for a run with two service coaches back to Glasgow. The loco is seen at the Straths Bay's own station at Abbey Moor before picking up its train. Rare opportunity to see steam in action on the scenic Highland Railway mainline to Perth.